Since the beginning, mankind has constantly been trying to explain the world around them. Science has made huge leaps within the past century, from the discovery of multiple galaxies to the creation of the atomic bomb. However, scientists are scrambling to find an answer to the big question. How does the universe work? What are we made of? Why does everything happen the way they happen? What is the theory of everything? The theory of everything, more commonly referred to as string theory, is an attempt to unify the concepts of general relativity and quantum mechanics. In order to understand string theory, you need to first have a basic grasp of these two concepts. General relativity, the most accepted theory of gravity, unifies space and time by interweaving them into a single continuum known as space-time and states that the mass of an object causes space-time to curve or become warped. This curvature is what creates the effect of gravity. Quantum mechanics is a branch of physics that deals with the universe on the microscopic level. It includes the uncertainty principle and wave-particle duality and is used to explain elementary particles, their properties, and the way they function. Long story short, general relativity deals with things on the larger scale, while quantum mechanics deals with things on the smaller scale. So, what is wrong with these two scientific ideas? In fact, nothing is wrong with them. They both work perfectly when they are separate. However, in conjunction, everything falls apart. This is because each of them has a different set of rules for how objects move, and it is difficult to make general relativity work with quantum mechanics. However, they are both equally important. Take black holes, for instance. Because black holes have incredibly large masses and extremely small singularities, you need both general relativity and quantum mechanics to explain a black hole. However, when used in conjunction, the math doesn't add up. This is where string theory comes into play. It is called the theory of everything because it is a unifying theory. It makes quantum mechanics and general relativity compatible with each other, and therefore string theory is able to explain everything under one set of principles and one unifying theory. But what is string theory? According to the standard model of particle physics, elementary particles like electrons, quarks, and photons are zero-dimensional, infinitely small point particles. However, string theory tells us that these elementary particles are not zero-dimensional points, but are instead made of vibrating one-dimensional objects called strings. Strings are extremely small one-dimensional objects that are infinitely thin and have an incredibly small length of 10 to negative 35th meters. This may be a little hard to visualize, so let's put this into perspective. If we were to take the head of a pin and magnified it to the size of the observable universe, and then placed another pin inside that universe-sized pin, then the head of the new pin would be the length of a string. Strings make up the elementary particles by vibrating at different frequencies. A string's vibration is what determines the elementary particle. For instance, if a string vibrates at one frequency, it will form an electron, but if it vibrates at another frequency, it forms a quark. This is very much like the strings on a piano. This is all fine and dandy, as it states that every elementary particle is made up of strings, providing a base component for the fundamental particles. The big plus about string theory is that it unifies general relativity and quantum mechanics. Renormalization is a process that helps make particles work with quantum mechanics, by allowing you to mathematically keep track of the particles and prevent them from getting out of control and creating a runaway effect. The problem between general relativity and quantum mechanics arises because graviton particles are non-renormalizable. String theory solves this problem, because since point particles are replaced with strings, gravitons are not infinitely small, which stops the runaway effect and reconciles the two concepts. The reason why string theory is called the theory of everything is because it allows us to explain everything, from the subatomic to the grand cosmic level. Sounds simple, right? Well, not exactly. String theory requires multiple dimensions. We think of our universe as having four dimensions, three space dimensions and one time dimension. However, string theory requires 11 dimensions, 10 space dimensions and one time dimension. What? How does that work? One explanation is that these extra dimensions are so small we can't see them or detect them. It is believed that these dimensions are curled up. Take this part of a bush for example. From really far away, it looks like a one dimensional line. But close up you can see it is two dimensional. The same reasoning can be applied for compact dimensions. If string theory is indeed correct, it can serve as an all-encompassing solution to the universe, and possibly provide evidence for a multiverse, and give us the opportunity for numerous other scientific endeavors. In the end, string theory could be the gateway to unlocking the secrets of the universe.